Oke, okay, hi. Please tell me if you can hear me all right. Okay, so uh, today I have this thing to do. Uh, as you know, I'm. Um, hi everyone. I'm. I hope you're safe. Uh, we are staying at home uh, and doing just working. Uh, so I hope uh, you are everyone. Uh, you're uh, safe and sound and healthy and having fun maybe if 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 you can okay so i have uh, to do some work uh, as you know i have been doing this new series of um uh, shops the new storefronts in which i just imagine new uh, stores uh, similar to my previous um, similar similar to my previous uh, tokyo storefront series but this time all of these are um, imaginary and um, uh, I have I, I done a new one uh, I did the lines and I did a photo of these lines uh, and I want to um, test the colors on uh, the iPad so I thought that uh, I would uh, show you how I uh, do it hi uh, the music is from um, epidemic sound if you look for um, like um, how do you call it uh, chill uh, and lo-fi hip-hop there you will find these songs okay so I'll import a, a photo I did a photo of this so I have this here and first I would like to kind of get it together and filter it so we can put it into procreate and use this as um, our base for um, for drawing and painting okay so i'll just crop it like this okay that's a nice and squarish and um, let's put some filters on it i still haven't figured out where the filters are in this app uh, when that when i need them it's kind of difficult to find them okay so let's adjust the white and i want one more layer of this filter and I'll put a mask on it, like um, mask layer, and then go black, and then fill it, and then we can choose a brush which is like nice and big, like about this big, and let's choose white and this mask so we can just put the levels in some places that still the paper is not white completely like here okay and here at the bottom and um, I want to make it black and white so I'll put a black and white on it and that's it basically so we have the lines uh, and maybe I can put levels once again on it levels, levels. and make the line a bit more dark I'm using here a, a, a ink that is 
grayish so uh, it's not perfectly black so that's more or less how it looks on on paper okay so now i can export this Yeah, the quality of the stream is not really good. Uh, this is Affinity Photo. So, okay. Okay, so I have now the, the, the lines uh, and I can export this into a JPEG and let's just save it to my photos. Uh, save image. And so we can open Procreate, close this one. And I can import the photo like this. So now we are in Procreate. And um, we can color it. Okay, so this is a, um, how do you call it? A stamp store that makes um, something that's really important in Japan. So the stamps that you use for, instead of signing things, you use stamps, you have a stamp. And um, when you have a really important thing, like, um, I don't know, um, uh, thing that you have to sign, a lease, for example, for example, or something like that, uh, instead of signing it, you stamp it. You even have to stamp um, on packages that you get from places. Instead of signing that um, you uh, got them. Okay, so uh, we'll try to color this um, first and then we could uh, we can um, adjust some uh, let me check uh, I actually re reinstalled um, the software on my Mac uh, I had to do it because uh, it wouldn't shut down and, and do stuff so um, I set it up again today from scratch so that's why maybe some things are still not working as they should no but the image is not flipped it's okay you can read gallery on the top and and so on so ah, yeah, the image is flipped um, this part this part is flipped uh, because this is a stamp so the logo of the shop this which says Morikawa um, is a stamp so um, it's flipped. That's why uh, I'll make this part here red uh, to show that this is actually a stamp. So now the image is not flipped. Um, this part here that I'm painting right now is flipped. like this so for example when you come to Japan and you want to live here um, you have to have a hanko which is a stamp your seal uh, and you get it designed based on your name or your surname um, and that was a problem for me because my surname is a bit long and in Japanese characters 
uh, it's uh, longer even still and usually in Japan um, when you have just a Japanese surname it's two letters or uh, something like that long uh, but for me uh, they had to really do a custom one that um, had uh, all the letters and you get it um, made like custom made you can buy pre-made if you have a, a name that's pop popular in Japan and then you have to register it in your um, like city office so you go there you stamp it a few times and they take a sample of it and so um, it's similar to a process of taking like how do I know, fingerprints maybe so you take the fingerprints and then um, if you have uh, uh, f something like a uh, form that you signed with this stamp uh, they can uh, compare it with the one that they have on file and see if it's not forged so you have to be kind of careful not to lose it or, or not to give it to someone and just to use it on your um, important uh, business so you keep it at home in a safe place uh, and um, you use it only for like important things like um, renting a house or, or buying a car or um, signing your taxes or whatever and um, so you have a second one probably a second seal that you use for like more day-to-day -day basis stuff and these come mostly in this kind of self inking kind of shape that you don't have to like ink and you don't have to have the stamp pad and um, so uh, a place that makes these uh, seals is really important you have you you have them everywhere like um, in front of a train station or whatever you have these and um, it's actually interesting to see all the designs that uh, the stamps can have you can have one that's in um, traditional like it's made of wood but you can make one f you can have one from made from stone and there are all of those self inking ones recently there's like a Japanese company that ha that makes these and um, yeah so there's like a, a whole business thing um, around the uh, the stamps and still you have some places that actually do them by hand but mostly it's like machined uh, but still someone has to kind of take your name arrange arrange it on on the on the seal because it's kind of small really actually um, I think mine is like a centimeter and two three millimeters in diameter so they had to fit the my whole surname uh, in it and so that was a challenge so I wanted to um, put some elements like stamp like elements in this picture uh, to show that this is actually a, a stamp store so um, usually you have um, like a kawarayane so um, roof like this one uh, it will have um, those kind of round pieces here and usually they are the same color as the other um, tiles I think roof tiles yes but uh, here I wanted to make them also look like uh, a Japanese seal because a Japanese seal looks like this so you have any and you have like a mark that you know which way is up and you put it on a like a stamp pad and then you put it and uh, you stamp it on somewhere on a uh, on paper so it's like this kind of most of the times whitish piece of something with with um with the stamp on one side so i wanted to uh, make it so i wanted to recreate it here to make it kind of similar okay if you have any questions you would like to ask me or something you would um, like me to talk about then i hope you uh, have read my article i uploaded a text yesterday uh, about my adventures in 
uh, tools for destruction less writing so if you have a bit of time and later you would like to read something um, just go to my twitter or my blog and the text is there hi everyone okay and here also for now i'm doing the colors just like roughly uh because i want to um just put something here so then i can uh, go in and change the colors if i need to so now i just want to uh, color all the elements in so i have something to work with and i try to keep each of each of the elements on a separate layer so um, then i can use a filter or paint over the, it really easily and just change this one uh, color and i'll as also add a shadow using a simple multiply layer soon but first let's do the base colors uh, thoughts on the iPad Pro? I have the 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 uh, the one that's not the newest one anymore because of the of the newest one that was released, I think, the day before yesterday. Yesterday, and I'm really happy how it looks. I'm really happy how um, they chose to make like a incremental update, which does not change so much but makes it just faster and uh, with a better camera and and so on. Um, so I really think that it's probably the, the, the best one yet um, because I really really like the one that I have and the new one is just uh, faster and uh, has better specs so uh, I'm guessing it's even better uh, and um, yeah I like the um, the new case I'm actually thinking about buying the case because of the keyboard and um but mostly because of the touchpad thing uh for me i think ipad is really great for for work and for making things and i'm actually uh using it a lot for um drawing it's my main drawing device right now if i if i am doing something digitally and um but uh, it had this problem that when i wanted to write a text i can write text really easily on it uh, but it, when it comes to editing things, um, the touching stuff with the finger is not the best input device for everything. And it's okay if you have the uh, Apple Pencil for, for like drawing and, and making like notes and, and drawing like di diagrams and stuff. But if you have text, you need always to like put the pencil away, type something and then the, take the pencil again in your hand fix something move the cursor and then put it back again so having a touchpad an option with the touchpad will be great for all uh, of you who actually use the ipad for writing i'm guessing so um, i i think that because of this addition there will be a, a group of people really happy uh, that they can use the ipad more um, efficiently for writing and um, doing stuff like I, I don't know Excel or whatever uh, because it's it's certainly fast enough to do some serious stuff on it um, I have edited 4k video on, on the one that I have so I think it's enough for 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 anything actually and um, yeah if if um, if I would be buying one i would be buying the bigger one because i would like to use it for drawing mostly so i would like to have the bigger one but yeah it's a it's a really great great device actually and i'm i'm a, i'm a bit disappointed because maybe they could do something like more interesting with it uh with the update but yeah if they chose to do like an incremental thing that um, makes everyone happy then it's okay The yeah, burnout is not bad. No, is not good. Uh, I'm, I I wrote a bit about it in my 
um, in the article that I published about the, the writing things. Uh, but um, I did uh, the Tokyo at Night book, which required me to do a lot of really difficult and time consuming paintings. And um, I was a bit burned out up after that. Uh, but I always, I always feel this kind of pressure to do something um, that uh, I will be able to show you or upload to the internet or have something done actually with my time. So um, even though after I finished that book, I was like, okay, I will just pause for a year or a few months and do some thinking and maybe try to do some story writing and learn how to do stories and and be more kind of story oriented because that's why i came to japan in the first place uh, i started doing another book so um yes i made another book like a small thing that's called uh, hokkaido in ink which is like a collection of ink drawings and it took me like three months to to, to finish um so that's a good outcome but um again it's like a this thing that kind of cal calms down my anxiety so uh, i have a proof that i actually did something so i have worked on something and uh, it had it kind of has results but uh, for me, I would like to try to um, actually stop a bit and think more and um, write more, maybe do some story writing, think about some interesting stories and stuff. So um, more than with, an, with a burnout, I am fighting with something that I think is also a problematic thing, which is um, this kind of um, pressure that you put on yourself of constantly working and doing something and if you don't do something um, you will actually be um, you know not satisfied with who you are or like um, feel bad about yourself because uh, I didn't do anything for like two days or three days and um, all those fantastic people on the Instagram are just constantly uploading a lot of interesting stuff and I'm doing nothing. Um, so that in, in my case leads to burnout because I'm, I just have enough <sighs> always drawing like um, difficult things that I in the end feel um, are uh, just using like half of my brain because I'm just doing stuff and not thinking enough about what I should be doing. So um, this year I, I kind of, um, I'm kind of trying to break with this habit uh, with the use of writing. So sitting and sitting down and thinking and then and, and resting and reading and telling myself that um, reading a book or doing something that's completely unrelated with my work is also good for my work in the end uh, because uh, of the experience and stuff that I can then put into my stories and uh, use in, in my art and so on and so on. So um, I'm trying to fight burnout and prevent it before it kind of happens, which is difficult. I did just a photo. This is just a photo of, of, of the line art and um, I corrected it a bit in Affinity Photo, but this is a photo of a line art I did for this painting. How much plan would be... Um, too much for me. Um, I guess it, it's this kind of level of planning when you feel that you already did the picture and doing this again 
is kind of painful so I try to keep my planning to this level when I feel like okay I have a nice base for painting with watercolors and I know that uh, at least color wise the plan that I have will work but I still don't feel like I already did the work and I just have to repeat it in watercolors so um, that's a probably a different level for each person um, I guess some would be um, really happy to just go straight in the watercolors and just uh, hope for a good outcome because it kind of keeps them fresh and allows them to enjoy the work but for me having a base that I can use for uh, the watercolors kind of cal calms me down and um, I can focus on just having fun with the paint and not thinking about every color choice that I have to make on the way. So um, I think it depends on the person but if um, painting this again with watercolors later is not feeling like um, I'm doing the same work again just repeating it then um, I'm still alright I guess. But then again, sometimes I, I do uh, too little preparation and um, I'm also trying to fix that. I don't have any suggestions about the learning anatomy because I'm really bad at it too. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm afraid I cannot help you with that. Um, I haven't actually studied um, drawing characters and, and at any capacity so uh, the only thing that I can do is just um, pretend that I can do characters and, and uh, try to pretend well enough so the reader does not um, actually think that I'm just pretending So uh, getting back to this burnout thing, I think it, it depends on uh, on the person. But for me, what is working right now is um, having some um, really chill uh, thinking and, and writing time and um, treating reading and research as a part of my work and also reading and researching on things that kind of interest me either way so um, I, I'm not I don't have to um, like force myself to do it and um, I'm trying also to use some let's say it hobby toys for me to uh, keep uh, writing so I have bought some nice things to write on not a, like a writing typing machine but um, just go a look at my um, at my blog uh, so this also helps because I uh, I love those like small um, like pump top kind of devices uh, so I bought myself some to to motivate myself to just sit and write and um, but also this is only um, like a stopgap measure because I have to spend like a half a year doing it or whatever to to, to uh, have enough like short stories or, or whatever to um, actually do something with it. Um, so I'm also doing these shops that allow me to have something to show you and something to upload on YouTube and something that I can actually, for example, sell. Uh, on online um, in the meantime so I can be like oh I wrote yesterday uh, my first short story and it's still not perfect but I will have and I'll have to fix it but also uh, this week I did one uh, Tokyo storyfront no, like the new storyfront so um, I have some something done on both of the fronts and for some people that can be uh, 
uh, a lot of distraction just going like back and forth between two projects but for me it's uh, um, it's actually easier to stay focused on um, on stuff when I have this kind of choice uh, I can oh today I feel like I'm doing like writing and today I feel like I'm doing some uh, painting and I can choose what I feel like doing today how do I choose colors for now I'm just going with it so um, I know that it, what material it, this is like wood or, or, or plaster or tiles or whatever so for now I'm just trying to put some colors on it so uh, I can start with with actually choosing the colors so for example I know that this case is made of wood so I'll just color it like this kind of woody brown color for now and then we can go over it again uh, when I will be actually deciding what the whole kind of color scheme will be for this building uh, and I would like to have some tiles here so and I try to limit myself in how many colors I'm using at once so um, if I have a roof here that's this kind of greenish color and I need tiles here I will use the same color here uh, to keep this helps to uh, with keeping this whole thing kind of color consistent so we have like a palette that we are using here like a theme hi I don't have to Bing. let's move it This is just a reference for me, so it doesn't have to look good. Okay. All my brushes and also the ones that I'm using right now are on my website. You can just download them. There are two sets, one for sketching, one for painting, and you can just download all the brushes and try try them for uh, yourself. Yes, I had done some work with um, uh, acrylic, but um, I prefer doing uh, a painting with acrylic gouache which uh, has a matte finish and is more like plasticky uh, which i like so actually uh, i use acrylic gouache from from time to time um, and i paint it with this kind of style that's similar to um, how do you call it animation backgrounds i like painting bricks <laughs> I like painting bricks but more than bricks I like pa painting tiles I guess uh, okay uh, let's paint the inside of the shop a bit so I'll make a layer here and let's make it arbitrary visible color for now so I know what I'm doing and then we can make a nice color gradient on, on this when we lock, lock this layer like alpha lock it Okay. 
okay and i'll duplicate it so it's not so transparent merge it and alpha lock it so now we can do something interesting with it okay and uh, we went so far so we can uh, already i think add a shadow on top of stuff so let's make a new layer put it into multiply and uh, this color is okay so let's just start adding a shadow okay so while i'm coloring this i'm um, also trying to uh, kind of make some decisions how to put colors and sh stuff like shadows in so um, the shape of the building is easier to kind of comprehend and understand so for example here if I put the shadow on the dark part it's harder to see it uh, so I will not do it but also I'll put shadow like here to show that this is actually like um, inlay so it, there's like a step here and a shadow here and also underneath this part here so I'm not only using the shadow as like a tool to make it look better but I'm also trying to use the shadow as a tool to show its shape better so it's easier to understand which part is on top of which and, and so on and it's a important tool to add for adding like um, depth okay Uh, it, it saves all the time um, so I don't have to save actually here wh while I'm drawing it also saves the, the video of, of the whole process while I'm doing it um, so um, that's really useful actually but you could um, if you want um, you could uh, just export the file as a PSD on various stages of, of painting but um, usually you don't have to um, save anything uh, you don't have to remember about saving uh, I have been using the beta version of Procreate for some time and I didn't have any problems even if the app crashed or whatever because it was beta um, uh, the file most of the time the, the file was there uh, for me to recover so It's actually quite stable. Okay, so back here. Greetings! Season, like um, a, a season of the year. I really like spring. Um, I, I like um, also autumn but recently I have been interesting in interested in this kind of um, early spring which is still a bit of like snow remaining in uh, on like fields and stuff and it's kind of darkish and not yet uh, warm so I would like to um, show this kind of season it's it's really difficult and i think it's it's a bit not so popular because it doesn't look so good but i think if i was able to get this kind of feeling right it could make a nice uh, piece this early spring okay Here's the green layer. Let's add a layer here. Okay. Okay, so we have the shape of this thing, more or less. Uh, so we can start to actually decide what this will look like. 
Uh, first, I would like to add some highlights on the roof. So I'll duplicate this layer, merge it down, and then erase some parts. Uh, I was in on a multiplayer layer for the shadow. Uh, I'm streaming uh, using a lot of dongles. Uh, I have a dongle that allows me to um, have a charger and an HDMI output from the iPad. So that's the ap Apple dongle. And then I have a HDMI cable going to my computer. And to have the uh, HDMI video into my computer, I have something that's called uh, a Camelink, which is made by a company called Elgato. Uh, which enables you to connect any HDMI thing to your computer via, via USB. And then to connect this thing to my MacBook Pro, I have a USB to USB-C dongle, uh, which I have to use because my computer only has USB-C ports, but the uh, Elgato thing is a USB-A plug. So I have a dongle cable, USB dongle dongle set to connect but it works well actually and it works better than um, wireless streaming from the iPad because the quality of the uh, video is a lot better um, I'm I consider uh, the backgrounds at the earliest stage there is um, because when I, you are doing like animation or something like a comic or an illustration um, I think that the background is a, a crucial part of, of the whole thing so I would be considering the backgrounds and the contents of the background um, from the beginning so um, I almost never like drew draw a character and and then uh, be like oh, what to do with the bug out here it's always um the whole scene that is considered and not only like a character or whatever If you have a scene that you want you 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 like to convey some emotion or something uh, it's always better to consider it as a whole and not just first the character and then um, adding stuff i was just erasing what i painted with an eraser so uh, okay so i don't like the part that um, the the wood part is too dark so um, let's make this first it's this part here so let's lock it and let's make let's choose a bigger brush like this one and we can start by making it brighter a bit Maybe a bit more saturated here. Uh, there's no original picture. <laughs> uh, this is just made up completely. So um, there's no like reference or whatever. Ah, I like the, the lines. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, it like this okay and I'll adjust also this part uh, was it here? 
it's like a gesture with two fingers you swipe uh, on the layer and it locks it uh, so it's uh, alpha locked and it gets this kind of checkerboard pattern and then you can paint on it uh, without um, destroying what you already did and going over so the green shadow together with the brown um, it does not work well and with watercolors it will look really bad so I'll go for a more bluish shadow on this one I guess like somewhere here Okay, and okay, and the roof is not on fire. Um, let's make it a bit more saturated and more bright somewhere here so check different colors can i make it like this kind of weird brownish color no it looks kind of boring Somewhere around here. Okay. And the tiles. Uh, first, the, the, the letters here are ha the, have to be less saturated and brighter. Something like this. And the stamp is too orange. So let's make it less orange. Okay. It has to be kind of weathered. Not stained, but it has been outside for a long time. So the color is not so saturated anymore. But to make it pop a bit more, I can always make the background a bit darker like this and also make it less saturated okay and to complement it the the backing also i will make like this okay I didn't make the quarantine didn't make it difficult to freelance I guess mostly also because I'm not freelancing so much right now um, I'm trying to kind of focus on my own art and on my own work so um, we don't have so many like meetings and stuff uh, Kana is doing a, a comic so it just requires her to sit and draw and I'm um, actually the main thing I'm doing right now is this series of, of shops and then I'm just sitting down and writing some st story ideas. So um, most of the things that we do, uh, we uh, didn't have to change anything about about what we did. But yeah, it, it makes kind of um, hard. It's, it's a bit it's a bit hard because um, when we moved to Tokyo, um, the reason actually when we moved back to Tokyo was to uh, have a bit of fun uh, going around like museums and cafes and stuff uh, because Kana has the, 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 the comic that she is doing right now is about old Tokyo so about Edo uh, and she cannot go to all those um, like museums and libraries and, and, and places when, where they have the materials that she wanted to use for the comic for reference because everything is closed so um, it, it a bit diff the, the quarantine thing a bit diff de defeats the purpose why we moved to Tokyo in a way uh, but our kind of everyday um, activities didn't change so much
I cannot wait uh, uh, for 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 uh, the quarantine uh, to be lifted. But I guess it's still quite um, sometimes still. Uh, I'm 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 more worried about um, uh, the Olympics. Uh, to be honest than um, anything else uh, because if they really go ahead and actually uh, do the Olympics in, in Tokyo uh, I think there is a big chance for the uh, disease to spread again uh, this time being kind of uh, important from a, imported from a different place so uh, yeah I would really be happy if they um, cancelled it and moved it a year or whatever and actually, there are there are some <coughs> signs that um, <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> I cannot speak too much. Hmm. Ah no. Ah, me aru. All the bl brushes I'm using are on my website. So just go for the tools section and you can just download them and check it. Uh, there are two sets. One is called painting, one is called sketching. Uh, so you can just download them and uh, have fun in Procreate. And there is also a set for Photoshop, which is similar. <clears throat> so I'm adding some details to see how this would look like if I actually painted this with watercolors. Okay. This part is too dark. So yeah, mm. if if they there would be like a, a thing that you could vote for um, the Olympics being like held and and uh, moved a year, I would certainly be voting for it to be <coughs> uh, moved to 2021. But hey, I'm I'm just a <clears throat> guy painting shops and I don't know much about like economic um, backfire of something like that uh, the watercolor version will be taking a lot of time so probably it will be a video as usual I actually have a, a new video about these uh, 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 shop painting uh, things already on my workbench so I'm 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 going at it with um, Final Cut Pro, but because again I'm kind of trying to do some story writing and stuff, uh, I'm a bit slower with with editing and I'm I'm eating a throat lozenge. So sorry. What's my favorite part of painting? Mm. There are a few things. Um, for sure, it's like some of the times when you do something and it, it goes better than you expected. Uh, there are also having like done something uh, and it went like according to plan is also very satisfying. And I also like um, these kind of moments when uh, I'm just like exploring and sketching some ideas and I sketch something I didn't kind of consciously make before starting 
um, I'm on, I'm one of these people that cannot imagine stuff. They ha I have to start drawing to 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 imagine things, and then just kind of fix what I see and build upon uh, build upon that. Uh, so I'm not one of these guys that can can imagine imagine things completely in their head and then just sketch it. I have to kind of f search for the right line and, and so on. So. If I manage to find something that looks actually better than I expected, that's awesome. And uh, when this happens, I'm really happy. Like um, I'm exploring, a, 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 I don't know, a, a city a scene, and then I draw something and a building, like a I don't know, window or design for something, and half randomly, and it looks really like interesting. Then it's just a pleasure. I have a pre-cola. Amen. Usually I would go for the Japanese. Um, Tante Quero. For a Japanese brand, but um, they didn't have it, so I have a Ricola. Amen. Ah, there is a brand of Japanese throat lozenges which is called Ryukaku-san and they have one uh, which has like a uh, uh, fruit shikwasa taste which are awesome if you any uh, uh, if you come to Japan um, you have to taste it again if you want to my brushes just go to my website like here and in the tools section um, if you go down you can download the brushes here the the, the procreate and photoshop set uh, and you can test them um, i also have uh, been developing some brushes for the uh, p5 so procreate 5 brushes but um, I still have to tweak some things there too, so they are usable. I will also upload them when I finish them. I like this color, but I think it should be a bit brighter. Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, so let's um, do something with the inside of the shop. The shadow is a bit strong, so I can put a nice um, gradient here. Something like this, probably. I don't have any suggestions from for online courses, but um, I would just um, try to reverse engineer what you like. I think it's a best way to learn anyway. Um, you can get um, some painting courses that teach you overall painting, like um, painting uh, in opaque me mediums. I would recommend, for example, an um, online course by um, James Gurney and his course in painting with gouache which is really nice and you can um, apply uh, this knowledge for doing um, animation backgrounds um, if you go too far in just like 
painting uh, animation backgrounds you can um, start using like the, their kind of language to do all the, your things and that's not really good because uh, you have to remember that painting animation backgrounds is very li limited they have a limited amount of time and a limited amount of kind of styles that you can um, use that they can use so um, you end up looking like everyone else doing like anime backgrounds so um, I w rather than that I would recommend just um, landscape painting classes in opaque made media and then building up from there and maybe trying to kind of uh, match what you do with uh, some anime but um, the, the best anime backgrounds are not anime backgrounds the best anime backgrounds are just playing good um, art like um, fine paintings and they have like a distinctive style so I don't I don't think like that, that anyone can teach you any like like this kind of thing just um, they will try to teach you painting in the style that they already have and that will only help you to paint like someone else which is not really good So when I was learning how to do animation backgrounds uh, and painting them digitally, I chose the style of, of Makoto Shinkai to learn because he was doing the best animation backgrounds they, that um, um, were at that moment in, in digital. But that was also because I was hoping that I can actually get into his studio. So I didn't mind um, painting like he does in the same style. But um, this ends up being uh, a bit of a curse for, for you because um, even now I get like um, uh, emails being like, oh, we have this new uh, building that we built in Tokyo and we would like you to do uh, like an illustration of it. And I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. But and like, do it in the style of um, your name or whatever. And I'm, nope. Because this is not my style, it's the style of the animation studio, so... Okay, and this part of the case also has to be in shadow. And I can make some like 3D looking effect by adding some interesting shadows here. Okay. And I like this color, so maybe I can use it in some other places. Ah, hi! How are you in Italy? Are you okay? We have here another person that worked with me on <laughs> uh, Makoto Shinkai's works or in the animation studio. Uh, so, yeah. So most of the places that do the hanko, uh, they also do like nameplates for buildings and they have most of the times two kanji marks so they end up looking like this.
yeah using similar materials using similar brushes also but mostly it's more about like the thinking process so the best would be to have like a documentary movie showing you how they do stuff so um for example you can get a documentary about studio ghibli that is 26 hours long about how they made ponyo you can you can learn a lot of things from that um uh, and you can you can see some documentaries from like what we did when when we did the the, the your name or whatever uh, and um the best would be to have some like video material for uh, how they painted or what they did about um uh, the concept art stage uh, do they do it alone or do they do it like together do like do they do uh, brainstorming or just everyone paints something and then brings it or how um how it's uh, kind of logistically um done um, is it based what like is this background based or something for example in in the in case of studio ghibli all the backgrounds are based on the storyboard that hayao miyazaki makes or the other di directors make so um if, if so how uh, does this kind of a sketch um uh, get get created um what are the the, the steps it's important to not just look on or for on the uh, the finished thing but also like the process uh, the process is most important so um like for example if i want to know how a, a scene was made in in, ha in some of studio ghibli movies for example then i would look f at the storyboards first and then maybe before that to the to the concept arts and then like uh -huh, okay so they wanted something like this so then they did a, a, a storyboard that looks like this and then they made like a layout that makes looks like this and then the uh, background art person did like like background that looks like like a concept art that looks like this and then finally they have a background that looks like this so um the whole process is really really um important and not only the result uh, because that's just like the technical skill of course for the technical skill you have to look at uh, how do they do grass or how do they do walls how do they do wood do they paint like the wood grain or not or what do they do with this problem so you have to have like a base of works that you can look at and and um, try to find if they are already have a solution for a problem that you have so, for example, in, in the early days that I that I painted, I would uh, like look for, uh, okay, how do they do grass? And I would look for grass or, or stones or whatever, and I would, would try to, um, I would try to um, look for some examples that can help me uh, and guide me on the way. But sometimes it's it's just things that are too. Um, Mm, kind of difficult to just look at the final picture and 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 can uh, and reverse engineer them so you have to you really have to look at the process as a whole because you will not um spot these Like there, like the, there's the, the 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 documentary that's about um, Ponyo, and it's like um, five DVDs or Blu-rays, and I think like 26 hours of, of of video. And I think I watched it like 20 times, maybe. <laughs> it's more times than I than I lis listen to the all Harry Potter books, I I guess.
okay so for details like the like the text on on on, on this part or like a, a logo here or whatever like a hanko here stuff like that that uh, i would do after in already in, with watercolors so um Um, working for, for, from home is okay as long as you uh, move also. Um, I learned it the, the hard way. I actually um, had some health problems that I had to um, deal with because of I was only like working. Um, so now um, also we are doing like um, exercises and i did a lot of running uh, uh, and now we have um, nintendo ring fit that we use almost every day to to move um because it's kind of fun also so it's really important to move um it's just because um you will not notice while your kind of um well-being deteriorates and it's um, really uh, dangerous, actually. And the second thing that I want to say is that um, you should probably aim for stuff that kind of bring you satisfaction and fun. But also be able to just stop and... Um, don't feel guilty about not doing work so it, the best would be like to treat yourself as your your own friend or whatever so it's really easy to get a, 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 um, really tough on, on on yourself when you are working at home because you you feel like you, you're like you're doing nothing so maybe having a, a list of, of things that you have to done that you done or like doing a journal or whatever that just tells you that you actually did something and um, allows you to keep kind of scores on what you are uh, what you really did um, can help so um, anything that um, allows you to um, feel that you did what you had to and now you can rest or whatever and don't feel uh, bad about it is good Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. so i have been doing journaling i have been doing like a a, a, a dry board a dry marker erasable list of things that we we do like a project board um i have been doing some like um how do you call it uh reading and and watching movies or whatever or gaming i'm actually now waiting for um breath of the wild to 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 come so i can play some um in the evening if i can so it's really important actually to to to, to rest and move if you can you can do some yoga or whatever and it actually helps uh, even though while you're doing it you you can feel like uh, but um it's really easy to get into bad habits <laughs> okay Want to make this part less saturated. Something like this, maybe. Okay, and let's make.
this part a bit darker Okay, and now we can play with some lighting maybe, so I'll add a layer on top of everything except the lines and I'll turn it to screen first and we'll choose a color that's nice and saturated but also kind of brightish like this one maybe okay and let's try to do something ah uh, yeah the, the 10 years of Miyazaki is on NHK right now and you can watch it and even has like English subtitles but it is actually uh, from what I can see after watching a bit of it it's actually some of the video from from the documentary series that I was talking about just recut and um, uh, changed a bit uh, for like foreign um, viewers and also made shorter so it's not so deadly 26 episodes of Miyazaki just like talking to himself and, and, and working so you have to be like a diehard fan to actually go through it <laughs> so the shadows were a bit too harsh so i i'm experimenting right now with adding a bit of like screen layer to um countermeasure it a, a little so it's like having a photo and then putting some filters in instagram so it makes it look more um kind of cool and uh it makes the colors look more um less contrasty and more saturated and um, um how do you call it the palette more consistent if it's too much i can always like put it down a bit okay and now i add a second layer which is the overlay which will allow me to do some nice lighting effects and add a bit uh, of contrast in the places that I want to have contrast. I uh, don't know when it will be on DFTBA because um, DFTBA is um, probably really busy right now. Um, I wrote to them the package is already in US, um, but because of the coronavirus and all this stuff happening, um, uh, it's a bit hard for me to reach them actually. So yeah, um, as soon as as I can, it will be there. The package is actually in uh, Montana, Missoula right now, uh, so um, it should be really close to their like, headquarters. Kana chan dou mou kore? Oh, kawaii. Iyo ne. Mm mm, うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。う
the rough colors on the uh, pencil sketch some are done like um, on this stage and some are done on the lines on the final lines like this one uh, so when I kind of feel that I have the contents right I already um, do it on the uh, final lines uh, but when I want to experiment a little bit in um, Procreate I will uh, do it like like here so um, on the first sketch on the thumbnail and then I'll add elements and add stuff in Procreate also before going in and, and drawing the final version so here for example I did like I don't know several versions of the of the of the logo in Procreate because it was just easier for me to do it digitally and um, but here I, I colored the the final lines like we did today so it just depends on, on what stage I, I, I am and how kind of um, sure I am about the contents but um, the one that we did today, uh, I'm, I was kind of sure about the contents and uh, I knew what I was aiming for so I could just paint it and then uh, I just had to um, research the colors for it. So the only thing I think I will do differently is this part here because it doesn't look like glass so much so i'll just make it a bit brighter maybe so it does not uh, meld into the frame so much something like this uh, if and if i can do it that it would be really interesting to do, do some highlights here so if I was doing it digitally, I would do something like this. Maybe on top of the lines. So I can So I can simulate that there is a glass here. There's glass here actually. But this would be really hard to pull off with watercolors, so um, I can do it digitally here and then think what to do when the time comes to do it actually uh, with watercolors i would use like airbrush on top of this to um, get this effect but um, actually uh, if you start using an airbrush with watercolors um, you keep using it all the time so we uh, sold the airbrush that we had um, uh, just to keep m myself from using it all the time. So yeah. Mm, how to do it on in well, Okay, I will just I would I <laughs> I will think about it later. Yeah, it would, it would look it would look better with a glass thing here. Like this, yeah, something like this. I could use, I could use acrylic gouache or just white poster color to do it on top of everything when I finish painting. But um, I also would like to kind of keep this series of illustrations simple uh, so i am trying not to add like too much realistic elements to it um so yeah okay um uh, i guess that's it thank you for joining me today i uh, i'm sorry that i could not answer all of your questions if you want to check my uh, brushes that i used uh, go just go to my website and in the tools section you can download them and for procreate and for photoshop also and if you want to check um, uh, all the other images from this series just also go to my website go to the illustration series and then it, there are all the shops that uh, i already did in um, you can just see them in better quality and also um, 
I will be publishing a new video on this soon and I'll have a file uh, where you uh, will be able to uh, submit or see all the um, stores uh, that ideas that I have some that I have so far and just submit your own uh, like kind of ideas for for next stores that I uh, will be making so if you have an idea for a nice uh, Japanese store you can um, write it under the video from this series on my channel okay uh, so I guess that's it and I'll be painting this probably tomorrow so I'm sorry that I could not answer all your questions I hope you're all safe and uh, healthy uh, please stay safe and um, have a nice time thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next stream